questions. Hello, Christian. Um, we just have some questions regarding the issues faced by the Montgomery County Police Department. And hey, Chief Jones. Good afternoon. How are we doing, Jason? Great. How are you? I'm doing okay. Okay. Um, so basically, I just want to start with just kind of letting you know the format that we're planning. Okay. Obviously, you see that we're recording. Um, we're thinking do like a, a YouTube video and then we'll do an article based on, you know, the responses. So it will be a video form to see you. Okay. Uh, are aware. All right. And, and uh, with that, I'll let uh, Christian take it away. All right. Hello, Chief Jones. Hello, Christian. Um, we just have some questions regarding the issues faced by the Montgomery County Police Department and your opinions on these issues. Okay. Um, so a year ago, Maryland decided to reverse their decision to remove police officers from their schools. Uh, due to reports of police brutality across America, many students are under the impression that all police officers are dangerous people. And some students do not trust the community engagement officers that are stationed at their schools. Uh, how do you think officers will be able to regain the trust of students? Well, I think the first thing, Christian, is I think there, there's a lot of misperceptions about uh, these fears. And part, uh, part of these fears are the fear of the unknown. So when you don't have a relationship with anyone and you just, um, you just go by um, individuals' uh, beliefs, um, what you see in the media and what you believe is to be true uh, without knowing an individual police officer yourself, then those fears can be real. Um, and so what, what we try to do is to try to find ways to engage with people so you learn how to have a, a relationship just as you, you know, when you walk into a new class, you don't know who your teacher is and you have to learn and trust who that, you know, and, and building that relationship with your teacher over the course of that school year. So it's very similar to like a police officer, whether the police officer works in your school or the police officer who works in your community. It's the same concept, right? It's about, again, we're all humans. You know, many of my police officers are former students of Montgomery County Public Schools, right? They're not, mm -hmm. they're not robots. They are individuals that, um, you know, that either went to school with you know, even some of the the, uh, the students, their moms and dads, per se, right? So mm -hmm. the reality is that we are human, and, and having a human type of relationship helps to build trust. Um, and that's the that's really the crux of uh, policing in a, in a nutshell, is to be able to build trust with communities. Our police officers have to build relationships. Mm -hmm. Right. You mentioned that um, social media can play it can play a big part and perhaps creating uh, false perceptions or false identities of people. This actually leads into one of our next questions. Uh, social media has played a big role in our county. Uh, for example, during the Magruder school shooting, uh, many Magruder students actually took to social media rather than alerting school authorities and the police. What is your opinion on the dangers of social media and how it influences teenager behavior? Well, you know, social re media, I think, for first and foremost, it has its role in our society, right? I think it's, it can be very beneficial to, to many uses, um, but it also can be damaging in, in ways. And when we sometimes forget our core responsibilities um, as citizens um, in order to help people in need. So as we talk about the Magruder incident as, a, as an example, here we had a student who was injured. Um, and where those who knew that the student was injured, instead of calling 911, decided to go to social media to talk more about the event than to provide assistance to someone who was in need in, in that, in that, you know, a very crucial time. And so there's a time, there's a time and a place, I think, for everything, right? That that wasn't the time to be on social media. It was the time to pick up the phone and call 911. Now, after the help is there, you know, then having that, you know, conversations on social media is, you know, can be had. But I would say it's important that we make sure that we get the necessary help to individuals when they need that. So um, that's really the crux of what I was saying when it came to individuals who are utilizing social media at the wrong time. 
um, mm -hmm. in, in that particular type of situation, because I think it's important that life is more precious to us and we need to keep that in the back of our minds. Absolutely. Um, now, MCPS has recently installed vape detectors in the bathrooms of six high schools, uh, high schools, namely Richard Montgomery, John F. Kennedy, Northwood, Paint Branch, Quince Orchard, and Walt Whitman High Schools. Mm -hmm. uh, has there been a decrease in the number of drug-related incidents since this change? Well, I think that these, um, these vape uh, machines have recently been in, in, uh, engaged. And I think, again, part of our MOU with MCPS um, it has not been an increase in the number of calls for police involvement um, because a lot of this is we uh, we work with uh, the MCPS administrators and they would handle many of these types of incidents on the internally uh, without police involvement. Um, so I've not seen an increase in numbers of calls um, from these schools. Um, you know, to be fair, I think it takes us to look at uh, this through a full school year. Um, and uh, we haven't seen those vape machines in yet. Um, I, you know, again, I hope it does deter uh, more so than catch. Um, um, that really to me should be the objective here is to deter students from vaping um, in, in our schools. Um, because again, I think that if there's, you know, there is a prohibition against that, um, I would hope that they just wouldn't do it in the first place in order to prevent them from getting into any trouble. Mm -hmm. Um, what do you think are good solutions to pre-existing drug problems in high school? Well, you know, I, I don't necessarily think that all the time that an arrest is necessary. Let's start there, right? I, you know, mm -hmm. again, one of the things that I work with Dr. McKnight on um, in this past school year is that we really changed our focus on um, marijuana as an example, that, you know, it wouldn't be a police um, issue. Um, in, in that regard. Now, there are other drugs that we, we definitely take um, more seriously, particularly as it relates to fentanyl as an example, because of the overdose issues that we have, in, not only in the schools, but in our society. Um, and that's a, because of the, the danger um, that it could lead to someone's death. Um, but I will say from a standpoint of, um, you know, marijuana, you know, we, we specifically... Uh, looked at not um, having um, police involvement um, in as, as it necessarily is related to enforcement. Um, we would document and seize the illegal drugs uh, that were um, on possession of a student who is underage, but the reality is that we would not make the arrest and MCPS would then, they would put forth any type of disciplinary issues internally uh, from their standpoint. Now, there's sort of a three strikes rule, right? That if you continue to be a problem, but that was that was very rare in this last school year. We saw a drastic drop in drug related incidents in our schools. So that mm -hmm. was a that was a good thing that I think based upon that policy that we created, um, I think we'll maintain that momentum having um, had you know later discussions with Dr. McKnight that we'll maintain that momentum just the same because again, even though Marijuana is, has become legal uh, for adult use of 21 years of age and older. Um, it's still, I think, going to be prohibited in our schools. So the reality is that we should, you know, again, continue to to make sure that uh, those rules are being adhered to. Mm -hmm. And how has the police responded to acts of misconduct, such as uh, possible harassment of teachers, graffiti, and theft throughout MCPS? And where are these issues most prevalent district-wise? So generally those are case-by-case -case basis. Um, and those are school administrators who make a decision on involving um, police in these types of situations. Mm -hmm. um, you know, when you talk about harassment of teachers and um, whether or not there needs to be some intervention on behalf of law enforcement, again, you know, depending upon the level of that and whether it actually rose to uh, a crime, um, that would be something that if it doesn't rise to a crime, then that means that we don't get involved in um, those types of situations. Anything that does involve a crime, such as, um, you know, the type of harassment that might be criminal, or if you talk about graffiti, which is vandalism, 
Um, those doc those are documented. We documented each vandalism that was reported, and particularly as related to hate crimes or mm -hmm. bias incidents, um, which was very high, unfortunately, this year in Montgomery County Public Schools, which was very disheartening, to be quite frank. Um, but we documented all of those incidents as they were reported to us by MCPS um, officials. So um, we take those very seriously. They take it very seriously. Um, and again, because we that's sort of something that we don't want to tolerate um, in our society. I think we have to really kind of, again, stay attuned and educate people, um, all of our students on the impact of these negative messages or these um, harassing type thoughts are uh, words that are said are symbols that are being drawn or painted, however, whichever it happens, um, that it has a negative impact on our community, such as what happened in Walt Whitman, um, as an example, um, last year. So, and that's just one example, but, you know, when it, when it really hurts in, in a community to its core, because of what's happened in our, in our history, um, that relates to bias incidents, then people have to understand that that, you know, that those things are very sensitive in our communities and, and really uh, does have a very negative impact. Mm. We're, we're very thankful that the police force is keeping track of all of these incidents. Yes. Um, the next three questions are a bit more personal. They may be a bit more personal to you. Um, back in 2021, uh, during Black History Month, you reinforced that you wanted to, quote, leave the department better than you found it. Mm -hmm. uh, what were the potential flaws of the police department and have they been corrected in the past few years? Well, I think overall, I think when we talk about flaws, right, I think we always can look at processes, community, community um, relationship building as an example, how we can be better at what we do and the service that we provide, our engagement as an example. Um, and so for, from my standpoint, I think sometimes we as police officers can get sort of in the, have our tunnel vision that we have a responsibility in certain areas, but we don't necessarily uh, take personally take the opportunity to come out and be a uh, forthcoming with our communities and, and engage um, in a very positive manner. So this is where we really focused on having more positive engagement. Um, in order to be um, to to work as partners in the community to help to try to to re to deal with crime issues, um, and so this is something that we continuously drive um, um, throughout um, all the way from the top of the organization down to the lowest level um, to provide the best service possible to the community. When you talk about public safety, right, and how we are building a a system of confidence that says that people are confident in our police officers to do the job that the community wants them to do in order to keep them safe. So, you know, so all of, again, about being professional, uh, maintaining that professionalism. And so we've done a lot of things as it comes to accountability, uh, monitoring to make sure that our officers are being accountable um, and making sure the community is aware of that accountability issue. Um, and uh, so those are the things where I think we've gotten better. Um, the technology has improved um, across the board that, you know, not only are officers are wearing, all of our officers are wearing body-worn cameras that gives us that accountability piece, but that we're now seeing and showing the community, um, these are the interactions our officers are having with the community. And even when time, someone is doing something wrong, that they are being held accountable as such. So. Um, I think we're in a better place today than we were back in two years ago. Um, but again, we work to strive to work to be better every day. Um, and I'm never going to stop and rest on our laurels. Um, and I think that's that's a theme that we have to continue here for the police department. That's great to hear. Um, since assuming this position as chief, what have you found difficult about the job? And are there any issues that you've become more aware of than before? Well, if I would say what's difficult about the job about, you know, I think what's challenging is that every day is a challenge, right? That, you mm -hmm. know, again, um, there are new issues that arise that we are confronted with. I think one of my toughest challenges um, that I've had, there have been a couple of them, 
first and foremost, I think it's really about staffing levels. And, you know, when after George Floyd and there was lots of conversations about defunding the police and a lot of sort of rhetoric that caused a lot of pain and angst within the police departments, not only for Montgomery County, but across the country, then you started seeing people leave the profession um, or retire earlier than anticipated. Um, and which required us to, you know, try to replace them, but we've not been able to keep up with that attrition, which is a challenging part of the job. And because we have to now make adjustments because we have less officers today than we had when I began my career as a chief. So, mm -hmm. so now that, that challenge is being, being, being met. Um, you know, we are, we are really working hard to, to, to find individuals who are now interested in policing and want to be a part of Montgomery County Police and be a part of this community and finding even people within Montgomery County who want to be a part of our department. Um, and so, you know, that's a challenge, but it's, it, 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 it makes it, uh, it's not easy because it's something that we have to fight every day. The mm -hmm. second part of that is I think it's, it goes to my officer morale um, because of what I just explained, right? So, so a lot of negative talk about policing. Look, policing is very rewarding and it's a challenging career. It's not an, it's not an easy job, right? It's, it's really, um, it's a very challenging job um, in so many ways of providing public safety, whether you're a criminal investigator trying to solve a crime or whether you're a uniformed police officer just responding to calls for service. But the one thing about it is that police officers, you really, because they're public servants, and we're all public servants. We come into this career um, looking for a reward of making sure that people are safe, um, that we're protecting people in a way and really trying to do our jobs. To, if there are individuals who are doing uh, bad things against members of our community, that we're trying to um, do what we're supposed to do in order to um, make sure that those people are being held accountable in the criminal justice system. So with that being said, you have officers who are very distraught to some degree because they felt like there were parts of the community that wasn't supporting them. And so mm -hmm. they weren't as motivated, right, to do the job. They were frustrated. Um, and many of them um, were either on the verge of leaving, uh, many who decided to leave and some didn't, um, but mm -hmm. stayed with it. And so then my job as the leader of this department and working with the community was to maintain um, try to and not only maintain their enthusiasm for the job, but to try to even boost it and to make it grow, to show them that the community does value you. I value uh, the, the, the work that they all do. And I think there are many members of who in the community who I call the silent majority, right? These are the vast majority of our communities that say, I want to be safe. I support our police department, but there are other facets of, of uh, you know, the, of the community that, basically had a louder voice um, in the anti-police rhetoric. And so that created a little bit of that storm. But I think that tide has turned. Um, I do believe that to be true. I believe our police officers are, are uh, really, you know, boost their morale has been boosted. They have a new enthusiasm of going out and getting the job done on a daily basis. And, um, and we're seeing some examples of that um, on a, really on a daily basis. Mm, that's great. It, it, the police force is extremely crucial to the safety of the community. So that's great to hear. Yes. Some of their uh, morale has been boosted and that they're willing to continue the job. Um, this leads into our final question. What do you wish the public would know about the life of a police officer? <laughs> uh, I love that question, Christian. I think it goes back to what I talked about earlier. First and foremost, we're from the human race, right? Mm -hmm. um, that we all come from different backgrounds. Um, we are a diverse police department. Um, you know, we have officers who are from different parts of the country, um, from different religions. Um, but but at, when it's, you know, they might be, um, they could be male, female. Um, their sexuality can be different. Um, but at the end of the day, they are human like everybody else in our society, right? They have kids, they go to school, uh, they go to church, they go to, uh, they, their kids play, play sports, they play sports. 
Um, you know, and they do all of the things any other community member does, right? It's just the only thing that separates us from the other parts of society is that we are sworn police officers and we have, um, you know, we have, we are, again, understandably so, regarded to have to have this upstanding character to actually A, do the job and be a part of this profession, um, which is a pretty heavy lift, right, as a public servant that you're always in the spotlight to some degree. Um, and that's a, that's a burden that you have to be willing to take on um, in order to, to, to be a part and to understand that communities demand um, excellence in policing. And that's rightfully so because of the powers that a police officer has um, that impacts people's civil liberties. And so, um, so at the end of the day, again, understanding the core functionality, right, of a police officer comes from them being a human. Um, and uh, they, they have feelings, they have concerns and, you know, and, and, and all the like. Um, they care for victims, they care for students. Um, as an example, you know, when all, our officers who were school resource officers were literally told by some students that they didn't want officers in the school, that was impactful in a negative way because mm -hmm. those officers are, you know, from a human standpoint, they, they, they viewed that as, um, somebody doesn't value me for what I bring to the table. Their job was not to be in schools to arrest students. That was never the number one priority or objective. Their job was to protect and serve and, and make sure that students were safe in the school environment, but it was never taken that way. So the reality is that that, again, just shows you how there can sometimes be a disconnect between the human side of policing and what others see is when they don't look at it that way and because of the, A, lack of re relationship, so. Mm. This has been extremely informative. Um, hopefully this will shed light on the, the role of policemen and uh, maybe eliminate any false perceptions that anyone may have of police officers because they have been doing an amazing job in the Absolutely. community. Um, that about concludes our uh, session. Um, it was, again, very nice meeting you. Uh, back to you, uh, Mr. Maxine. Yeah, I just want to say thank you, Chief Jones. Really appreciate you um, taking the time. And um, yeah, thank you for your service as well. So. Absolutely. My pleasure. I appreciate you guys doing this. Thanks for the opportunity. Great. Thanks okay. so much. All right. Have All right. a great day. You too. All right. Bye. Bye.